Now it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to help equip you to share your faith more effectively. And once again, I am joined by Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome back, Fuzz. Krista, how are you? I'm good. And I am enjoying sort of these occasional conversations we've been going through on our testable creation model strategy. And today we're going to talk about the fossil record. So maybe the best place to start, I'm thinking, is tell us a little bit about how evolutionists make sense of the history of life. Yeah. Well, I mean, they would argue that, of course, life's history unfolds through evolutionary processes, and they would point to the fossil record as evidence for uh, a history of life on Earth that is ever changing, ever evolving. Uh, and so that's how an evolutionary biologist would interpret the fossil record. So when they see things like the whale fossil record right. and all of these transitional forms, as they call them, they would see that as being evidence for their approach. Yeah, that's right. It's not only those evolutionary series, but also it's just the totality of the fossil record, which seems to show a progression from simple life forms to more complex life forms. Got it. Okay. So now uh, we at Reasons to Believe, we call ourselves old earth creationists. So we mm -hmm. believe God intervened at strategic moments mm -hmm. in the history of life to create mm -hmm. new life. Mm -hmm. How do we make sense of the fossil record? Because it does seem to show all of these transitional yeah. forms. Well, I mean, when you look at Genesis 1, for example, you do see a progression to how God creates life on earth. And so we would look at the fossil record and say, the fossil record is a real history of life on earth, but it, it's a, a history that uh, is reflecting a creator's ongoing involvement to bring about his creative purposes where a creator's orchestrating the history of life on earth. And the fossil record is uh, a, a representation of that history and should show us evidence for a creator's involvement. So when we see things like mass extinction events where a, a large percentage of the population mm. goes extinct on the earth and then it's repopulated mm. um, fairly quickly, yeah. we look at that as, wait, there's something maybe going on here that evolution can't account for. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I, I think is very fascinating that I think supports a creation model approach to the fossil record is every time there is biological innovation in the history of life on Earth, where we're going from one regime of complexity to another, where there's new types of life forms. These events always happen explosively without any kind of intermediate grades documenting that transition. And that's exactly what I would expect if a creator is involved. If suddenly we would see innovation that shows up out of nowhere without any kind of, again, documentation. And this is for like the origin of life, the origin of what are called eukaryotic or complex cells, the origin of body plans for animals. And then when we look at the history of animals, we see what are called radiation events where these explosive diversification events taking place for fish, for uh, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and for mammals. And so I see these as signatures for a creator's intervention. So going back to the whales for a second, mm -hmm. when we think about this, because this is in every high school textbook yeah. as being one of the quintessential case yeah. making evidences for the evolutionary um, paradigm, how would we make sense of what appears to be a sequence of whale development yeah. um, from our creation model standpoint. And, and I would agree on the surface, it really does look like this is open and shut evidence for an evolutionary history. Uh, but when you look at more details, you see that this transition happens incredibly rapidly uh, in, in under 10 million years. And that's remarkable when you think about the fact that this animal is going from a, a, a terrestrial environment to an aquatic environment. But on top of that, uh, we see what's called temporal paradoxes where the sequence of fossils is out of order, mm. where we see more primitive fossils appearing later in the sequence and more advanced fossils appearing earlier in the sequence. So there's some things that don't quite fit uh, the expectations of the evolutionary paradigm when we examine the details of these transitions. So in your experience, when you're out on a university campus or you're talking to non-Christians on social media, and you try to use this creation model approach to the fossil record, what do you find people's reactions are? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I think many people have, again, this, this perception that the only way to make sense of the fossil record is through evolutionary terms. And to be able to show that you could think about this from a creation model perspective, I think is eye-opening to people. But also, I don't think people appreciate the fact that the fossil record doesn't show slow, gradual evolutionary modifications as a rule of thumb, but rather it shows sudden appearances followed by vast periods of stasis, where again, when there's innovation, it always seems to happen explosively. And, and so the, the, I think many people, again, uh, have some pause for thought when they realize that the fossil record isn't quite what we are led to believe sometimes just from the perceptions we get from biology textbooks. So asking those strategic questions, helping people yeah. dig deeper into the details yeah. of the fossil record is critical. And I do want to encourage all of you to check out Fuzz's blog, The Cell's Design. There you can follow his interactions about the latest scientific discoveries and how they connect with the Bible.